Hi again, I want to talk to you today about Bible proof the earth is not spinning. Now I've previously made a video that was about how the Bible proves the earth is flat, but now I'm just going to look at this one area. I kind of skipped over this in that video and this one proof the fact that the earth is not spinning this is there's bible proof of this and it's absolutely irrefutable so we're going to look at the bible proof that the earth is not spinning and we're going to just tack this on as additional proof that the earth is not what science says it is the evolutionists the evolutionists say the earth is a certain way and they're just wrong they're just flat out wrong and they're, they've been deceiving the world for a long time with false science, just plain fake science. So let's look at the Bible proofs of the fact that the earth is not spinning. First of all, if we look at Genesis, we see in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And on the first day, it says in verse 3, God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, and that it was good, and he divided the light from the darkness. So God created light and divided light from darkness, and he called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So there was night and day on the first day of the creation. Now if we go all the way down to verse 14, on the fourth day, verse 14, God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and seasons for days and years and let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. And he made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven. And remember, the firmament is a firm barrier that separated water from water. And then God put air underneath the firmament. So God set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. So the fourth day, God created the sun and the moon. The greater light he, he caused to rule the day, that's the sun, and the lesser light to rule the night, that's the moon. And notice that they're lights, and God set them inside the firmament, and there was light and darkness for three days before this happened. This is the fourth day when this happened, starting at verse 14. After the third day, there was evening in the morning on the third day, in verse 13, then the fourth day. There were the lights set in the firmament of heaven. So the sun and the moon were created on the fourth day. And yet it says in verse 3, on the first day, the first day, God said, let there be light and there was light. And God saw the, the light that it was good and God divided light from darkness. So God was dividing light from darkness when he first created the world. And then he created the lights to separate the light and the darkness after the fact. Three days after, God decided, I'm not going to do this anymore. Verse 14, God said, let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night. So who is dividing the day from the night before then? There was evening and morning the first day. There was evening and morning the second day. There was evening and morning the third day. And there, this is the fourth day when God created the sun and the moon. And he created them to divide the day and the night. So who is separating the day from the night before then? Obviously, it was God. Because it says God divided the light from the darkness. So who is causing the day and the night? The day and the night, were the light and the darkness was being caused by God. God saw the light that it was good. God said, let there be light and there was light. Notice God created light. Darkness was the default. Darkness was on the face of the deep. There was no light. And God created light. And he separated, he divided the light from the darkness. On the very first day, Three days before he created the sun and the moon. Now people question this and say, well, how could there be uh, light and darkness without the sun and the moon? Well, it's very easily understood. If you look at Revelation chapter 21 and verse 23, talking about the New Jerusalem, it says, And the city, the New Jerusalem, had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. So, see, in the New Jerusalem, there's not going to be any need for sun or moon. 
Why would there have to be need for sun and the moon in the very beginning? God didn't have to create a sun or a moon to create light. God created light before he created the sun and the moon. The sun was a source of light that God created. So we can see that the sun and the moon were created after God created light and darkness. So this indirectly shoots down the whole theory of the fact that the earth is spinning. Because if the earth is spinning when God created it, in order for there to be light, the sun would have had to have been shining on the earth and the days and the nights would have been separated by the spin of the earth. Because that's what they say about evolutionary science. They say, well, the earth is spinning and the sun is stationary and the days are created by the sun shining on part of the earth. Well, if that was true, then how could Genesis chapter 1 be true? And how could this be true in the New Jerusalem? The New Jerusalem, the city has no need of the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God lights it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. So there's no need for a sun in the New Jerusalem. And that's how it was in the beginning. Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, God said, let there be light, and there was light. Well, he created it. God divided the light from the darkness. He did that himself until he created the sun on the fourth day. So there was morning and there was evening for three days before the sun was created, which means the sun was not causing the day and the night. So we see here that God is the creator of light and darkness, and he doesn't need the sun to do that. He didn't create the sun until after three days and nights had already gone by. So days and nights were first, and then the sun came along. So the fact that the earth would be spinning and the light of the sun would be causing day and nights is shot down right there because there was three days before the sun was created that there was evening and there was morning. So that means days were not caused by the earth spinning. Now we see another example in the book of Isaiah and in chapter 38. In verse 8, God is talking to Hezekiah and he says, Behold, I will bring again the shadow of the degrees which is gone down on the sundial of Ahaz 10 degrees backwards. So the sun returned 10 degrees by which degrees it was gone down. Now think about how impossible this is if the days were being caused by the earth spinning. If you have any idea how a sundial works, a sundial works by the sun shining on the sundial and the shadow never goes in the opposite direction. It always goes in the same direction because the sun is constantly moving in the same direction. And yet we see here that the sun returned 10 degrees by which degrees it was gone down. So it came back. In other words, the sun switched directions. Now this is absolutely impossible if the earth was spinning. If the earth was spinning and it just stopped spinning and then not only did it stop spinning, but it started spinning the opposite direction, according to modern science, that would defeat gravity. Gravity would no longer exist. Everyone would have just flown off of the earth. The whole idea of gravity is bogus to begin with, but the whole idea of gravity is shot down by this happening. The fact that this happened, the Bible gives us an account of how this happened. The sundial returned 10 degrees. It went the opposite direction. The sun switched directions. Now, if the sun was stationary and the earth was spinning, the only way that could happen was if the, the earth stopped spinning and then started spinning in the opposite direction. And of course, if the earth was spinning, there's no way it could possibly just stop spinning and then start spinning again. Why would it do that? Why would it start spinning in the opposite direction? So the whole idea of the earth spinning is shot down right here. There's no possibility that the earth is spinning. If that was true, this could not have happened. Life on earth would have come to a complete end and everything would have flown off into what they call outer space. Well, there is no outer space. We are living under the firmament, and the Bible's account is true, so this can happen because God can switch the directions of the sun because the sun is what's moving, not the earth. The earth isn't spinning. The sun is moving around the earth. The earth is flat. It's a circle with a wall around it. The Antarctica is that wall of ice that surrounds the water and keeps it all inside, and the sun circles the earth and that's why the sun moves across the sky because it's actually moving across the sky it's not the earth that's spinning no it's the sun that's moving and this is absolute proof of it right here the fact that it switched directions that could not happen if it was the earth spin it could not possibly happen 
We see another account in the book of Joshua when they were taking the land, the Israelites were taking the land in Joshua chapter 10 and in verse 13. And the sun stood still and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day. So here we see another case where the sun stopped its motion. In this case, it didn't switch directions. It just stopped. It just stopped completely. Now, once again, if the earth was spinning and that was what was causing the day and night, this would be impossible. If the, earth, if the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, that would mean the earth stopped spinning. And once again, everything would be thrown off the earth. The gravity would be defeated. The earth would have come to a complete end. There would be no life on earth. All life would have come to an end. This would have been the end of everything right here. The sun stood still in the midst of the heavens and hastened not to go down for about a whole day. So for a whole day, the sun stood still in the middle of the sky and that's, of course, impossible if the earth was spinning. Now, let's look real quick at some other examples. Psalm chapter 93 and verse 1. The Lord reigns. He's clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength, wherein he has girded himself. The world is also established that it cannot be moved. So the world cannot be moved. That would mean it's not spinning. First Samuel chapter 2 and verse 8. He raises up the poor out of the dust and lifts up the beggar out from the dunghill and set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he has set the world upon them. So here we see that the world is set upon pillars. Now, how could the earth be spinning? How could it be in motion if it's set upon pillars? According to the Bible, the pillars of the earth, the pillars that are holding up, they are the Lord's and he set the world upon them. He put the world upon pillars. Pillars are there to hold the earth in place. And that confirms what we read in Psalm 93, how the earth is established that it is not moved. The earth is not moving. Another example in Job chapter 9 we see Job speaking here. We know when Job speaks, he's telling the truth because at the end of the book of Job, God says that Job was the one who was telling the truth. The other people that were arguing with Job, they were not telling the truth because God said it was Job who was telling the truth. So here's Job talking. Job answered, and he says in verse 6, he's talking about God here, which shakes the earth out of her place and the pillars thereof tremble. Now he's talking about God because in verse 4 it says, He is wise in heart and mighty in strength. Who has hardened himself against him that he prospered? Which removes the mountains and they know not. Which overturns them in his anger. He's talking about God. Which shakes the earth out of her place and the pillars thereof tremble. In other words, if the earth is going to shake, if God shakes the earth out of her place, it has to be in place to begin with out of her place. In other words, the earth is in place. It's stationary. It's not moving, just like the Bible told us in other places. And the pillars tremble. In other words, if the earth is shaking, the pillars that are holding it tremble. So obviously, the earth is not spinning. There's no chance that the earth is spinning. And I gave, uh, and I gave examples of this in the other video I made, Does the Bible Say the Earth is Flat? And I proved basically that the Bible does say the earth is flat. And so here we see proof that the earth is not moving. It's not spinning. If the earth was spinning, then none of these things could be true. If God shook the earth out of her place, it has to be in place to begin with. And if it shook out of its place, the pillars tremble. Well, that means it's on pillars, just like it told us before. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 8, the earth is on pillars. Psalm 93 told us the earth does not move. It is established that it does not move. It's not rotating. So as you can see, the earth is not spinning. There's no chance the earth is spinning. We know that the whole account, the evolutionary account that science gives us is completely false. And if you read Genesis, you see that the creation of the world is completely different than what evolution says. God created each of the animals according to their kinds. He created each one. They're not evolved from each other. 
Man was created in the image of God. None of the animals were. And evolution is just completely false. And here we see that the whole account of the ball earth spinning is a false account also. That was just as false as evolution. If you ever study NASA, you know NASA is, has faked everything. We know that we know the moon is not a rock. We never sent spaceships to the moon. No, that's never happened. The moonwalk was a movie that was shot by Stanley Kubrick with the same effects as 2001 A Space Odyssey, which Stanley Kubrick also shot. And his wife came out with this and admitted it. And other people have come out and there's whistleblowers that have proven this, that the moonwalk was a hoax. It was, it never happened. And that's because the, the moon's not a rock. It's a light. The moon's not a rock. It's a light that is shining. And I've given numerous proofs of that in other videos. But the earth is definitely not spinning. There's no chance that the earth is spinning. The Bible is false, if that's true. If the, if the earth is spinning, throw out your Bible, because the Bible is completely false then. Either you believe the whole Bible or you believe none of it, because the Bible says all scripture is God breathed. We see in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be that word perfect there is mature, that the man of God may be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Either that's true or it isn't. If we look at 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 24, it says, For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withers, and the flowers fall away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. So the word of God endures forever, and the word of God is told to us to be all scripture. Second Timothy chapter 3. Verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. In other words, it's the word of God. So scripture says that the earth sits upon pillars. Scripture says the earth's not spinning. So you have your own choice whether to believe the Bible or not. And I'm not here to convince people that they should believe the Bible or not. I'm just here to tell the truth. That's all I'm doing. I'm just exposing the truth. You have a choice whether to believe it or not. And if you believe the Bible, then you know the earth is flat. It's not spinning. God created light three days before he created the sun. The earth is stationary. And God is the creator of light. The New Jerusalem, there will be light without the sun or the moon. So that's my video for today. Thanks for watching.